All right, well, I know this video is probably going to be for a very narrow segment of uh, the market, but it's regarding the Amp Mate, which if you have one of these, you know what it is. It is the auto feeding unit for the Amp Annealer. And I know not everybody has one. And, you know, yes, there were some problems uh, that were identified with the first one and uh, they've worked to correct that. Um, it's just some weird feeding issues and timing issues and uh, not everybody had the problems. Uh, you know, I've worked with them quite a bit since the Amp Mate first came out, um, you know, going through different iterations of firmware and software updates and um, trying out different parts and stuff. And um, it's been a little while. Um, I've had one, if you've seen my other video on the Amp Mate, I actually um, have had it up and working pretty good. I can do, you know, 500 to 1,000 rounds. Um, you know, honestly, it stops maybe once or twice um, for some reason. Um, and I actually am kind of excited. I'll show you the parts here in a second, but amp now has what they are calling a version two amp mate. Uh, it is still in beta mode. Uh, it will be released sometime in 2020 and they will also be releasing the upgrade parts, which I'm going to show you so that you don't have to buy a whole new amp mate. You can, uh, simply upgrade yours. And, um, you know, you're seeing it the first time just like I am. So Here's what came in the box, and I'll kind of show you where it fixes uh, or replaces things. So first off, they have a really nice short USB cord that already has um, the uh, magnetic unit on it instead of having the whole ferrite clamp uh, that they were asking you to buy. And then you'd have to coil up the cord and clamp the ferrite over it. Uh, you know, this has everything that you need, and it'll make for a very nice and clean uh, connection between the amp mate and your amp annealer. So I'm excited about that. Um, that'll just obviously install when I go to install it. Uh, the next thing is a new ramp. Now on the existing amp mate, if you have one, you probably have had issues where depending on the brass that you have, as it's coming down, it gets hung up between the, um, like CPU plastic cover board, and then the other piece of Lexan here on the feed ramp. And so it'll actually turn sideways and it'll block it up. And if you're not sitting here watching the thing, the brass will build up and then it'll cause it to kind of uh, clog or stop up in the front of the unit here. Uh, the worst thing that happens sometimes is brass falls in here that has not been annealed. So then you have annealed brass and unannealed brass. Uh, that you don't know what, um, you know, what is what. So uh, this new ramp, instead of being flat, it actually has a, a side to it, the tapered side. So the fatter end will be up towards the, um, where it kicks the brass out of the shell holder, and then it'll allow it to taper down and then fall into whatever your receptacle is. I really like this for a couple reasons. One, uh, with the old feed ramp, it was pretty big. Um, I use a like a four quart saucepan to catch all of my or stock pot to catch all of my brass. So it's not a huge deal. But um, when I first started using it, I had like a little loaf pan, like a little, um, I don't know, a little mini loaf pan type thing that I used. And occasionally brass would kick out either left or right of, uh, you know, this feed ramp here. And um, this obviously will help it direct uh, into a an area very cleanly and hopefully prevent the blockages up at the top. So uh, we'll install that. They have a new motor assembly for the, um, I don't know what the technical term is, but the kicker, the kicker plate uh, that is normally right here. So here's your shell holder. And then this is the kicker motor that comes up and kind of kicks the brass out onto your feed ramp down here. And it has a little uh, a little on off switch, and uh, the new one looks virtually the same, uh, but I believe that they have upgraded the motor a little bit, uh, and they have a slightly different wiring assembly. It's it's very minor. I'm I'm actually really curious to see how much better this works, um, because to be fair, it all looks very very similar. Um, the only thing that I can really determine is that. Uh, it may not actually be, let me look at this number here. So it, it actually is the same motor assembly and it looks like the same switch. It looks like what they've done, okay, this makes sense now, 
If you look here, you'll see this is kind of a wider plate and there's actually two screws that are mounting the switch onto this thicker plate. And if you look, you can see how there is no plate here. And um, previously the switch was just double stick taped onto the motor assembly, whereas now the motor assembly is wide open and they have this permanently mounted here. Uh, I kind of like that. It looks like they're mounting it um, backwards. So before the switch was facing towards the unit, now it's facing backwards. And when I move this, this 90 degree bracket uh, comes in and hits that stop switch. So, uh, you know, I, I did have problems with my old um, with my old one here coming off occasionally. And I had to put, I went and got some like industrial 3M uh, double stick tape. And I haven't really had a problem since then, but uh, I, I like this. That, that totally makes sense to me now. So it's a whole new bracket that they've built uh, and then put the same assembly on. Um, it is interesting that they aren't offering, it is interesting that they aren't offering just the bracket as an upgrade. They are making you probably buy the whole, um, a whole assembly again. So I don't know. We'll see what happens when it's actually put out on the market, but I really like this idea of the extra uh, bracket holding it there. Uh, we have a new set of, uh, well, I guess they sent new screws too. Uh, we have uh, a new set of side brackets here. So these will go here. Um, you know, looking at it, uh, there's a little difference in how the piece is molded. Um, this one comes in and just sweeps up real cleanly. Uh, this one has a little, a little kick in it right here that you can see. And then it also has a little hiccup down here. Now, supposedly this piece was upgraded for people that have, um, there's certain sizes of brass where because it's auto feeding, it isn't going down into the machine far enough. Uh, this upgrade is supposed to help um, allow that to go further down and, and properly anneal the necks on certain brass. I wanna say like 300 Blackout was one of the ones that they referenced. Uh, but anyway, um, I don't know that it'll have much difference for my 284 since that's pretty much all I anneal. But um, I do like that they're thinking about everybody and um, especially the the more unusual pieces of brass that people are having to make uh, in often cases. So um, we'll get those installed. It's nice and easy. And then uh, a whole new brain assembly. I don't know what else to call it other than a whole brain assembly. And uh, so you've got a whole board here and, uh, uh, you know, a whole new case. Now that is going to replace this whole board that's currently green. So it will replace that whole thing. Um, I guess it's, a, I don't know, I'm not an engineer. Is it a logic board? Something like that. Anyway, um, it's a whole new set. Uh, it looks like it's, um, let's see here. So it's gonna face this way. So it looks like, um, I don't know other than to tell you whether everything looks the same. So it's it's a lot of, um, everything looks like the same configuration, although I'm not looking at the little tiny stuff, but all the main uh, processors look the same. Uh, everything's labeled the same, jam, finish. And it. Okay, so it looks like it's pretty much the same. Possibly they've upgraded the processor or something like that, or maybe the way that they're being attached, um, soldered in. I don't know exactly, but... Uh, the interesting thing is this is supposed to help one of the problems that uh, I've had the most problem with, which is um, either a stuck case or a, a non-fed case that causes you to have to reboot the whole amp mate. Uh, I can deal with most things. It's not a big deal, but it is frustrating when, you know, maybe you're setting this thing, you go inside for a while, you come back out, it, it has stopped and uh, you can tell that there is nothing in the shell plate and nothing has fed and uh, you have to basically reboot the amp and the amp mate at the same time so they pair properly, uh, or you end up with a case that is stuck down in the amp annealer and it has not come back out, in which case you have to do essentially the same thing. So I do know that is one of the big things that this is supposed to fix. So I am pretty excited about that. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with the details of actually changing this all out. Um, I will go ahead and take care of it and um, come back to you. But uh, just know, I'll kind of go over a couple quick things that uh, if you can, I've, I've, I've had to work on this before um, while they've helped me with some different issues. And I can tell you that um, while it would make things easier for certain parts to take uh, like an entire side off uh, or to take this whole side off, 
to access things. The more you can access without disassembling anything, um, personally, I think you're better off. Uh, I use, um, I mean, I use everything from just a standard pair of pliers to, I've got some really long needle nose pliers to reach, uh, to hold different uh, nuts in place and whatnot. Uh, but my, my course of action when working on this is to take as little off as possible to help ensure that, uh, that nothing gets totally out of whack on this thing. Now, I might be being paranoid. There's others of you that might go, eh, you're an idiot. Uh, you know, I can take that thing apart and put it back together without a problem. Well, that's cool. That's just not me. So, um, I'm fairly mechanically inclined, but I'm not to the point where I'm going to risk, um, disassembling it and not getting, um, some weird piece that they put in there back together. So everything that they have is relatively simple. Uh, these plastic pieces, there's a, a lock screw here. They even, um, sent a new set, uh, here, uh, that goes through the spindle that comes off. The plastic piece comes right off. That one's easy to replace. Uh, this side here, the same thing is going to happen, except you do have uh, this board that is going to need to come off. And that does require that you reach in, because um, I've had to change this out before. Uh, down in here, there are two nuts. You just need to hold on to them uh, while you unscrew it. And then there's a, um, a third screw back here. Uh, that one, I just pivot this thing back, and then you can just take this plate right off, put it back on, swivel this back up, put your two screws on, and you're done. Uh, the main logic board, uh, I've also had to take off and replace. Same thing, relatively easy. Now, I'd recommend doing it while you have this swiveled out of the way because that one screw is just below the line of um, this metal plate. So when you have this off and have it swiveled down, I'd replace the logic board at that point. But uh, it's just going to be those four screws. They're just held in place, again, by lock nuts that are easy to reach with a pair of little needle nose. And then the ramp is the same thing. The ramp just has... A screw back here that I would access when you take off of this plate. You would take off the second one, put your new plate in, uh, hold your nuts in place with a pair of needle nose um, or whatever you have, and uh, tighten them back up. Uh, and then the last thing is this motor assembly. This will be really simple because it's it's just uh, one nut here and one nut here, and then uh, the two screws are accessed from the back side. So that's just unscrewing that and putting it back in. So. All in all, I think this is going to be a relatively simple uh, kind of update. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Uh, I'll come back at the end, show you everything reinstalled. And uh, if there's anything along the way that I find that might help make things easier, uh, I will certainly let you know. So see you in a second. So here's what we've got. We updated the circuit board. We updated the arms. We updated the piece, the bracket, whoop, the bracket here that holds the uh, sensor and the collector. And then we've also updated the uh, chute back here that has the 90 degree on it to help prevent blockages. We've got about 400 some odd pieces of brass, 284, loaded up, ready to go. And we're gonna give this a run. So, you know, I've said this before, I was not upset that the AmpMate originally did not function 100%. Was it close? Yeah, it was really close. And over the course of, you know, anywhere from 500 to 1,000 pieces of brass, it would hang up a couple times. I'd have to come out. I'd have to pull a piece of brass out or, you know, start it over again. <clears throat> I honestly didn't care. Uh, you know, it's it's the fact that this thing keeps me from having to stand over the amp mate for an hour or two that I really love. Now, am I hoping that all these parts will make it so I can do 500 or 1,000 without it ever stopping? Of course I am. And I guess we're going to find out now. Uh, let me finish dialing in my settings here. And here we go. Now you can see I have it on the slower of the two settings. I just happen to like that. I think it, uh, I think it happens to help longer brass like 284 uh, from having any issues of getting thrown out of at the upper end here when it comes slinging, it'll, it'll come slinging over the top here. Uh, I find with the faster setting, sometimes it will throw brass out. 
you got to remember, there's a lot of little settings. You've got, you know, screws there. You've got four screws, that one there. Two on the back side. You've got an, a screw right there that helps you adjust how high the shell, shell holder is. You know, there's a lot of little adjustments you got to get right on this first um, before you go complaining about anything else. But we're going to do this. I'm not doing a time lapse. I'm just not in the mood. So I'm going to come back in a little bit and uh, I'll let you know what's going on with it. All right, here we are, 47, 48. Now, for what it's worth, in case anybody's questioning whether I had problems between round three and 48, if there's a hangup right here, well, it's either right here between the zero and the AM or between this, the 158 and the zero, uh, an asterisk pops up, and that lets you know that there has been an error code thrown. So until you see an asterisk in there, this thing still hasn't failed. All right, so here we are, uh, 95, and there's that asterisk I told you about. So I did lose a piece of brass right here. Now, when I put it back together, you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of screws that can cause different things to happen. I don't know what it is. I honestly don't think that this has anything to do with the machine itself, though. Um, I don't normally have that problem. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm wondering if when I put this back in, I didn't properly adjust it to the lip. Um, so it just caused it to miss one. So in any event, uh, we're going to fire it back up. All right. Well, let's see where it goes. All right. We're up to, uh, 180. Aside from that one little hiccup, uh, it's been running fantastic. Um, I did make a slight adjustment uh, to the uh, shell holder. I lowered it just a hair because I thought maybe the brass was clipping on it. And uh, again, haven't had any issues since. Yeah, there we are, 222 so far. Still no more issues and still running great. I guess I do need to empty that out in a minute. I've got uh, about that many more. What's that? All right, we're up to 364 now. Still running like a champ. And uh, feeling really good about it. All right, we are uh, emptying the hopper. I got no more brass left. Uh, looks like we've got uh, a few left in here. Everything went off without a hitch. Let's see what the final number turns out here. It's like 420 maybe. Uh, in any event, uh, despite the one that fell out, uh, I do believe that was my error and not the machine's. Uh, I did, like I said, make a slight adjustment to the shell holder depth and that seemed to have cleared up the problem. We've run 400 and, yeah, that's it. 420 pieces of brass successfully with the new add-ons and uh, everything's great. So I am very, very excited about the Ampmate 2 and it looks like they've worked out the kinks with it.